or just you? If you go up to, um, there should be a spot, spot where it's, where it gives you a little kind of either uh, a participant or speaker view. Like, do you have like a grid type thing on your screen anywhere? A what kind of thing? A grid type thing on your screen anywhere? No, that one is not on there. Um, okay. Just a minute. So meaning like more. nine dots anywhere? No. Okay. There should be some spot if you tap your screen, there should be some spot somewhere where it either says gallery view or speaker view. Um, and you can kind of toggle between those two and that should either give you where everybody's on one screen, like I'm seeing you guys all right now, or yeah. it can be the person that's talking and then that person would then be front and center on your screen. So, um, so your Zoom option should be. I've got a list of participants and only you has the video dot. Okay. Well, I'm the important. right, Rich. So, hello, Jan. <laughs> um, so, let's see. So, Rich, can I talk? You sure? Yeah. Okay. Oh, okay. So, I had I have that participant list, but then I went to gallery view and clicked that, and then I can see everybody. Gallery. Do you have that, Rich? Gallery view. No. Oh, okay. I've got mute, stop video, share. And if you go, is there any at the top of that screen, Rich? Um, no, I've lost it all together here. Okay, there we go. Um, do you want to leave this? No, I don't want to leave the meeting. So okay, you don't, across the top. All so Rich, says across the when I use my mouse, I have to take my mouse up to the right upper corner, and then you see it. With the mouse. I don't know. Are you... oh, oh, I got it. Okay. <laughs> it was a, there we go. On, a, on a Kindle, you use your finger and scroll okay. right or left and get all the other people. There you go. Or Ooh. just Josh. <laughs> <laughs> like I said, Rich, I'm the important one, you know. <laughs> okay. <laughs> <So>. <laughs> Um, <laughs> so we're going to do a quick highs and lows exercise here. Um, and so you are all aware, um, I am doing a little recording of this uh, session for, for some others to be able to partake in some of our discussions afterwards. So lucky you uh, that you get to, be that. Um, I'm going to, I'm going to send that off to, um, to Facebook once we have a chance to, um, for it to cycle through and get uploaded and whatnot. It might take a little while for um, 45 minutes to an hour here. But I uh, want to start off with uh, some simple highs and lows, uh, some, some great point, a great point in your week and a low point in your week. Um, and uh, I'd like everybody to share if you're willing to. Um, so Paula, I'm going to start with you um, and then I'll just kind of go around. So Okay. I really can't think of any low points. This to me is really no different than what I've been doing since 2011 when I retired, staying at home. The only thing I don't like is having people select my produce from the grocery store when I order online. That would be a low point, I guess. Yep. But the, the high point was we actually had our Christ care leaders come together over Zoom last Thursday. And it was such a great feeling to have everybody connected to see the faces just like we're seeing here, the smiles, mm -hmm. the kidding around that goes on, and just being in the word together with our leaders. That was a real high point. Jean, highs and lows. Uh, the high would probably be yesterday, the lovely weather that was mm -hmm. there, and um, just... took my dog to the dog park. Hmm. And the low would probably be the nightmare last night. <laughs> <laughs> oh, okay. No. Huh. Not, that's not what you want to have at night. No, that's for sure. <laughs> okay. Rich? Um, I think our high point is, again, technology. We're playing cribbage with our oldest granddaughter over in lacrosse. And uh, 
they're calling us, asking us to play cribbage, which I think is really cool that they're doing that. That's awesome. Um, the low point, I guess, is on the same level. When I can't get something done, I get so frustrated. Mm -hmm. Oh, darn it, I can't get <laughs> How do I get all you guys on the screen, or how do I do this? And So that does get frustrating, but you get over it. I'm, there's people going through so much stuff, and here I'm piddling about these little things, you know. <laughs> Jan, share with me some highs and lows, friend. Well, I really enjoyed the getting seeing all the staff the other day at our all staff meeting. Yeah. That was pretty awesome. And uh, and share some of their well, it seems like a lot of lows, but it doesn't ever seem that way when you're when you're in church on Sunday morning, uh, and the beautiful services you guys are putting on. It's pretty mm -hmm. awesome. Um, the hard thing for me is that I'm two hours behind. You're at 2.14 and I'm at, I'm at 12.14 here. Oh, that's and lunchtime in Arizona. <laughs> <laughs> well, we're coming back on Tuesday, so. Okay. Uh, yeah. It only takes one day to get in central time. Um, <laughs> Arizona's one hour behind and, and they never go on daylight time and so. Yep. They're pretty, time. they think they're that. special with all their sun. And they are, <laughs> you know, it is, a, you can feel so good here. Yes. It's a fun. Yeah, you Arizonans and your sunshine. <laughs> we've, we've, had, we've had a lot lately, so we'll, we'll take what we can get. But, yeah. I'll bring, right. I'll bring some, Josh. Huh? I'll bring some. Okay, please do. Bring it to the day. <laughs> <laughs> Andy. Um, I just find I have more time. The high is I have more time to do things with Terry. You know, I'm still working. I've been teleworking from Mayo since March 19th at home, but I work kind of by myself so I can work any hours I want. So, you know, two o'clock we went golfing yesterday and stuff like that. We ride bike and, you know, we just, I mean, he, it's like he can't go to the Legion anymore to be with the guys and I don't have girlfriend visits. So we've been just doing a lot of things together and it's really nice. Um, the one I've been having a very frustra frustrating day today. Um, yesterday they said for security reasons, mail didn't want us to use our personal computer to log into mail. So this morning, Terry and I went early, got all my mail, desktop and screens and brought it home and so it's been all day working with IT and they're like I don't you know it's just I don't know when I'm going to be connected again it's very frustrating everybody tells me something different <laughs> but anyhow so I'm, I haven't worked at all today so this is nice this is nice to be on this bible class mm. yes. good, deal. good deal well Highs and lows for me. Um, it's been, uh, I really, all right, for a low, to be completely honest, guys, missing the in-person interactions at church has been, that's been a big, big, big thing. Um, I love being able to do things like this um, and being able to have those uh, connections where I can, but man, uh, a high five from small children. And <laughs> that is, that's just something you can't replicate this way, you know? Um, I uh, read an article uh, earlier in the week that said this is almost gr a, a form of grieving. Mm -hmm. Like you lost someone yep. and it's so different from normal grieving, nobody knows how to handle it. Well, it is. It's, it is very different from a normal set of grief because um, grief normally gives you this sense of timeline that... You know, it's, there are some consistent things that you can count on that the time, time will heal, right? That these are the consistent things that will help with that. Uh, and right now, um, so much is unknown about, you know, what can be, can be done. Um, so it is, there are, mourning is definitely the right term and for some people, um, myself included. There's things I'm mourning. Um, yeah. I am extraordinarily blessed to be uh, at this church 
um, and uh, surrounded by such the awesome people that you guys are. Uh, just, you know, just surrounded in that, it's just such an awesome thing. Um, I've been able to get a lot of other home projects accomplished, um, which is a fantastic thing because uh, though my house still feels like an RSE project, um, <laughs> uh, it's, it, it, it's, it's better than it was. So uh, we'll, uh, we'll take that. Um, so in, in the last few weeks, I've gotten, gotten a roof put on, uh, gotten, um, gotten AC installed, um, so and getting trim painted around the house. So, um, so yeah, we're, we're getting there. But um, it looks like we are all on and we figured out a little bit about Zoom. I wanted to give us a little bit of time before we close and I have to be done at three because uh, that's when we as staff are doing our worship practice. So I have been told by Michael that um, he is not going to be the one to set up the technology for us today that the rest of us as staff have got to figure this out. Uh, so, um, so I'm going to be uh, trying to figure that out. I'm very grateful that April wrote down, you know, the 75 step plan to make sure <laughs> things happen. Uh, so, uh, you need all the time you can get. <laughs> yeah. So, so three o'clock is that time frame. But uh, so yeah, grab your Bibles if you have them. Um, and if not, the good news is you may be able, if you've got other technology or screens or whatnot, you may be able to have uh, some things up on different things. But we're in the book of Ephesians and we're just going to stick to the first chapter today. Um, uh, if we get to the second chapter, great. But uh, let's kind of chat through some of that. But before we get into reading, uh, some of this section from Ephesians here. Um, just some basic questions. What do we know about the book of Ephesians? Anybody? Paul wrote it. Paul wrote it. There you go. Absolutely. Anything else? Church of Ephesus. Is the church in Ephesus. Anything else? And I heard it, it might have been like a circular letter, not necessarily directed specifically to the church at Ephesus. Yep. But somebody later on stuck that as the title. Yep. Also, more than likely the case um, that it was, it wasn't just simply to the, the direct Ephesians, but kind of the, the region area. So what do you know about the city of Ephesus? It was big, big port city. It was. It was. It was a big deal city um, during the times of the Roman Empire. It was not a, not, a, um, not a backwater community, okay? Some of the places Paul wrote to were a little bit that way. Um, um, church in Philippians, for example, of, of Philippians. Philippi was kind of a backwater little town. Um, didn't have a whole lot of... Um, you know, wasn't a big city, didn't have a whole lot going on, but but uh, Ephesus, on the other hand, was a major port city in Asia Minor, okay? Um, what do you guys know about Paul during this particular time frame he wrote? He was in house arrest, wasn't he? He was, Gene. So he wrote a few letters while on house arrest, um, Ephesians being one of them, um, and the whole tone of the book is slightly different than some of his other ones. Um, you can you can see even the length and relative brevity of of a book compared to um, when he was writing to the Corinthians, for instance, or um, or to Rome. Right, there are very very different sections of scripture, um, but yeah. Paul was on house arrest, and that kind of sets our stage a little bit as we're um, as we're going to get into uh, into Ephesians here. So I'm going to read this first section, one through fourteen, um, and I also do have to apologize if the fire alarms go off. Custom alarm is here at church; uh, they're doing a little testing of some alarm stuff. So. Um, I started this slightly later than I maybe normally would have because I was going 
the alarm is literally going off right now. This would be bad first impressions. So, um, but I know they're still here. So just wanted to say that at some point. But from Ephesians chapter one, Paul, an apostle of Christ Jesus by the will of God, to the saints in Ephesus, the faithful in Christ Jesus, grace and peace to you from God our Father and our Lord Jesus Christ. Praise be to the God and Father of our Lord Jesus Christ, who has blessed us in the heavenly realms with every spiritual blessing in Christ. For he chose us in him before the creation of the world to be holy and blameless in his sight. In love, he predestined us to be adopted as his sons through Jesus Christ in accordance with his pleasure and will to the praise of his glorious grace, which he has freely given us in the one who loves. In him, we have redemption through his blood the forgiveness of sins in accordance with the riches of God's grace that he lavished on us with all wisdom and understanding. And he made known to us the mystery of his will according to his good pleasure, which he purposed in Christ to be put into effect when the times will have reached their fulfillment. To bring all things in heaven and on earth together under one head, even Christ. In him we were also chosen, having been predestined, according to the plan of him who works out everything in conformity with the purpose of his will, in order that we, who were the first to hope in Christ, might be for the praise of his glory. And you also were included in Christ when you heard the word of truth, the gospel of your salvation. Having believed, you were marked in him with a seal, the promised Holy Spirit, who is a deposit guaranteeing our inheritance, until the redemption of those who are God's possession, to the praise of his glory. So, there's a lot in there. Um, But uh, just kind of starting out, the word predestined came up a couple times. How does that word sit with y'all? I'm glad Stan Sorry's not on here. Stan <laughs> loves predestination topics. <laughs> I like to poke the bear on this one because <laughs> I come from, I was, for those, if you don't know, like my, my faith story here, uh, I was baptized Catholic. I was raised in a Methodist church and I didn't step foot into an LCMS church until I was uh, right around confirmation time frame. Um, prior to that point, um, I had some of those different backgrounds. Well, theologically, we're kind of all over the place in terms of some of that family background. Um, and the word predestined means something different in each one of those contexts, depending on who you're talking to. So um, just kind of wanted to chat a little bit about that word. Some churches believe, I believe, that, you know, we're not, I don't know how to put it, but we're predestined and it's all decided before we go through it, how I understand it. Uh, so we have, you know, we don't really have a choice either way, but anyway, that's how I get predestined and Presbyterians are mm-hmm. predestination, right? So, as in we do not have a choice, right? There is not free will. Right. (laughs) Why are you laughing at me, Rich? (laughs) I heard a story once that it's kind of like being on a ship. God knows how it started. And while we're on that ship, we get to choose free will, whatever we want to do on the ship. But the destination is also already a done deal. (laughs) And I don't know if that's a good way to explain it or not, but he, he chose us at the beginning. He knows where we're going at the end. And free will is something we're allowed to do while we're on the ship, while we're traveling. Mm -hmm. But then why do we keep, praying so hard for our children that may have um, drifted 
uh, I mean, we're supposed to do that. In a way, I wish predestination was true and that we were all chosen and whatever we're doing now and messing it up, it, in the end, we'd still go to heaven. Um, but that's spoken as a <clears throat> parent of a, someone who's not always in church. <laughs> It's interesting verbiage here. And it's interesting what we bring into the conversation when predestination gets brought up. Because um, it may be that we hear that word and go, and, and maybe we bristle. How dare you suggest I do not have free will? Or maybe uh, it, it makes you go, well, that is a comfort because then I know that God is in control of this situation and I'm not. Um, I think it depends on your attitude towards it. Uh, but I also think that there's some distinctions that need to be made with that word um, and what that means. Uh, Cause Jan, you were mentioning like in terms of we don't have a choice over like not just salvation matters, but you're talking like, I don't have a choice about what school I will attend. I don't have a choice about um, what, um, who I'm going to marry because that's going to be predestined by God, right? Because um, people bring that into this conversation in, in, the, um, in the theological sense that would be called double predestination. Um, that's, that's a, um, that comes primarily from a reformed background um, if you're familiar with the Reformed Church in America, but that's, uh, that's what they kind of mean by that, is that all those things are decided for you by God in advance. Even as simple things as what you wear and what you eat, that God had a plan for that from the creation of the world, and this is what you will do. Um, now, is it worth agonizing over a lot of those things? Obviously not, right? Um, the, the word predestination, I think, for most people has more of a salvation context. Mm -hmm. and, and that's the one um, that is the appropriate one to talk through. Um, and now, I don't know if any of you guys are in my class uh, starting in January. I had a class on God's will. We spent a lot of time in this text, <laughs> uh, but, and it's not one I necessarily want to spend uh, the next nine weeks going through, uh, but <laughs> that, because that's how long it took to kind of get through this section of, of what God's will for our lives means for this. Um, salvation was a primary conversation, um, and it was good. It was great. Um, but, you know, there's some things that I can try to condense for, for this part of the conversation. So um, let me attempt that quick. Um, Any time predestination is talked about in the New Testament, um, in particular in Paul's letters, it's really never about um, the salvation of somebody not happening. Meaning predestination is never about God has predestined those for hell. Does that make sense? Our brains want to make it an either or. God has predestined people for these two tracks. You've got heaven and you've got hell and he predestined people for that. Our brains want to make it that way. But scriptures only use predestination for Christians as a comfort. And in times like this, I hope that that's a comfort, right? That um, you're not physically in a church building, y'all. Therefore, your salvation is in jeopardy. That's obviously not the case. Um, but when we as Christians take these sections of scripture any other way, that's where things get a little bit get dicey. Our, our theology gets a little whacked and we start then accusing people, not accusing, but giving people this sense of dread that God from this beginning before birth for you, for you people who don't know Jesus, then well, 
that's your lot in life. Um, so that's where that becomes dangerous in terms of that word. Um, so, you know, Josh, when I read through Ephesians, I guess my takeaway, you know, Paul talking to those Christians at Ephesus, right, they're from the Jewish, are they from the Jewish or are they a combination of? Um, this one would actually be quite a combination. Um, there okay. was a very significant population of Jews here in Ephesus. Um, it's where a good chunk of them landed after they dispersed um, after the exile, but it was still um, very multicultural here in this city. So Okay. And, you know, to talk about the children of Israel, how, right, they were God's chosen people. Mm -hmm. Can you imagine now that you're a Gentile and you're hearing that, hey, it's not just for them. It's, we're included in this salvation at the very yeah. end. That, that would blow your mind. And it probably blew the minds of the Jewish people, you know, thinking it all did. along, we're it. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Wait, this is about somebody else? No. Yeah. <laughs> Only about me. <laughs> yep. Um, there's the word mystery there about God's will in verse 9 made known to us the mystery of his will according to his good pleasure which he purposed in christ now as you look around the world right now there's a whole lot of mystery about god's will at least it's for me as i look around it's not like i've got this like wow god's really up to this right now um i know that god is working through all this and I'm sure you guys can, can sense at least some of that and see some ways that God is. Um, but that doesn't mean that I'm like all aboard the, you know, what God is doing train. <laughs> uh, and, I, and I think, uh, I don't think I'm the only one necessarily with that, trying to figure out exactly like, okay, God, what, do you, what are you doing? Um, now, the good news in all of that is that I can be comfortable with that word mystery. Um, <laughs> uh, but I like, I like to throw some of these categories of predestination and, and other things under the word mystery because it makes me comfortable. I don't have to understand <laughs> it all. It's a mystery. <laughs> yeah. Yep. And, and, and Rich, that's completely okay. It's completely okay to just go, I'm, I'm leaving that one to God. Predestination just makes my head hurt. And it, and it does. And um, also in that, in that verse 9, when he talks about the mystery, he says, of his will according to his good pleasure. So maybe we don't have to understand it right now, but I might tomorrow. Yeah. Or he might reveal something else to me at a different time. Absolutely. According to his good pleasure. Hmm. Now, I feel like you've got God's will is often better hindsight, right? <laughs> yes. I mean, it's a lot easier to look back, have some perspective, and go, oh, that's what God was up to, and, and instead of in the moment. Sometimes it's just sometimes it's just impossible to to actually have have a comfort level with what God is up to. So, Sandy, you were saying something. I think I cut. Well, you off. well, I was thinking of that mystery too. You knew you go well. God is at work, but we don't know exactly what the purpose is. And I've been feeling like um, like with my Pablo class. You know, I had like a WeChat, and you know, and I had a group that was coming pretty consistently since January, we we're in WeChat. And so um, on Easter, I kind of, you know, all the ones that have been baptized, I write back in China and they, they even call me from China, making sure I had masks and all this. But in my class for Easter, I, you know, put in where the, where you could do the video of the church service and I heard comments back and that was April 12th. And then last weekend it was the 19th and I put, Oh, just remind you, here it is on the 19th. And I haven't heard a word. And I just feel like, you know, like there, I don't know, maybe they all went back. I don't know, but it's just, it's just really is. I'm feeling like it is a mystery of what is, what is God doing with our ministry at Pablo? It's just really, yeah. 
concerning. I know. Just. Yep. I don't know. It's really has me anxious. I guess. Yep. There's a lot of that going around. Yeah. yeah. It has me anxious as a as a youth director, um, trying to figure out um, things along this line too. Um, our RSC has been for this for this year. Um, our Chicago mission trip for our high school youth has been canceled for this year. Um, I'll be telling the kids this uh, this Sunday about those those things so we're still in the process of sharing that information but um, in terms of what that um, like what impact that kind of makes uh, in terms of uh, kids' lives I know what that means um, I've been a part of that with them and walked that road with them um, and and I'm going okay God you just took away this thing and this is a this is an awesome thing. So why? Now, I've said why to God many times in my life. I'm sure, I'm sure you, I'm sure this isn't the first time. If you're, <laughs> um, if you're asking God why, why COVID, why, why is the world shutting down? Why is all of this changed the way it has? Um, I mean, the good news in all of this uh, is that we can entrust our whys to God. Um, he's, he's a lot bigger than all of that, um, <laughs> and, uh, can give us, uh, when we don't know the why. Um, I, um, he's a big God and he can take your anger too. Uh, so. <laughs> I've heard from, um, so the people that I'm working with by phone, of course, that well, God warned us this was happen going to happen. And, and um, so I agree with them, but not exactly sure what that would mean. But. That God warned us this might happen? Tell me more about that, Dan. What do you mean? Well, I, I get from them that we've been warned um, by our, the events around here. Now, I, I really don't know what her background is. Um, you know, it could be a fundamentalist church or something, but, and, you know, all, the, all these tornadoes and all this, uh, and, and now uh, this germ warfare in a way. It, 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 it. So, but, you know, as, as a church nurse, we don't delve into that as much as just supporting them where mm -hmm. they're coming from, so. I don't know what that means, but yeah, not like to her, but I think she means that she we knew that if we didn't follow God's will, um, our country was been, or our world would be uh, in danger. Was what I got from our choice of person. Yeah. Well, and I and I have heard that in in some different circles that um, the. You know, this is God's judgment for, or that this is the end of the world, and these are the things that are, um, you know, progressing towards that. Um, I'd, I'd like to pump the brakes on some of that conversation. Um, it's it's not worth speculating. It's, it's, it's just not. Uh, just just leave that to God. Um, the church is still the church, even though it's looking like this now. Um, it's, it's looking a little bit more online, but. Um, the one, the one mystery that you know God was able Thank to. Thank you for that, Josh. Thank you. Yeah, that was yep. Um, the one, one thing I wanted to, you know, point out as far as a, uh, just a blessing in all this. Um, so our live stream services, uh, prior to us not being able to meet together, were maybe reaching like twenty people, twenty-five people. A weekend, our Easter service had uh, over 3,000 views um, and reached uh, more like 4,500 people in terms of seeing it in some way across their screen, um, which is a big deal. Uh, that's that's a lot of that's a lot of people being able to uh, interact in some really cool ways. Um, You're. Uh 
hindsight 2020 thing, I remember you guys talking about having shut down for a snowstorm for the first time ever, but what that forced you to look at then to prepare you for now. Exactly. Right. Yeah. Yeah. And Adam did that exact same thing, you know, that, that forced shutdown that was, I mean, he saw that, wow, we're projected to get like 20 inches of snow tonight. Maybe this Saturday service, I should just, I'll just going to hit Facebook live and we're going to see what happens. And it was at least something It got us going, right? Yep. It got us going a year in advance to at least have our, some volunteers have some comfortability. Now we changed it all on them. Nothing's the same. <laughs> if you see the front of our church right now, um, it's, uh, yeah. yeah. Michael's this devotion had all that on it. It was really cool to look at. Yeah. It, it's got, it's got quite a bit of stuff up there that we need to uh, figure out where it's going to go when we can gather together. But, um, yeah, it's, uh, it's needless to say a lot different. Um, and hindsight is always 2020 on those things. Um, but it is cool to see how God can work when you look back. Cool I know I'm something. preaching to the choir, but the, we're finding out the church is not a building. Yep. And it never has been. But it always yeah. amazes me how we as people can get such association with a building, um, you know, and Lutherans in particular, and I'm just going to pick on Lutherans for a sec because I've been other things, um, but man, stake out my pew and don't you dare take my pew. It's just such this beautiful Lutheran thing. Um, and it just makes me laugh. So, uh, but we're, we're going to keep going in uh, this chapter here. So I'm going to read this next section here um, from Ephesians chapter 1, starting in verse 15. For this reason, ever since I heard about your faith in the Lord Jesus and your love for all the saints, I have not stopped giving thanks for you, remembering you in my prayers. I keep asking that the God of our Lord Jesus Christ, the glorious Father, may give you the spirit of wisdom and revelation so that you may know him better. I pray also that the eyes of your heart may be enlightened in order that you may know the hope to which he has called you, the riches of his glorious inheritance in his saints and his incomparably great power for us who believe. That power is like the working of his mighty strength, which he exerted in Christ when he raised him from the dead and seated him at the right hand of the heavenly realms far above all rule and authority, power and dominion, and every title that can be given, not only in the present age, but in the one to come. And God placed all things under his feet and appointed him to be head over everything for the church, which is his body, the fullness of him who fills everything in every way. Verses 18 to 20. So good. Um, but... What does that power mean for us? That's really the core of our belief, right? That Christ died for us, Christ raised. Yep. Yeah. And it's not only that Christ was raised and our faith is not in vain because Christ was raised, but that same power is at work within us. It's something we often forget as Christians that we are... We are not powerless in this world. We have the power of the Holy Spirit alongside us. Um, we're going to be celebrating Pentecost here um, on May 31st. And um, it's such a good thing for us to remember uh, the work of the Holy Spirit, holy cow, um, in our lives. And that power that is there for us, it is just... It is just a fantastic thing. 
um, we hear from Paul later on to, to Timothy um, that uh, for God did not give us a spirit of, um, of timidity, but of power. Um, and I'm, you know, summarizing that because it's not coming to me as it should, because the scripture is just not on the tip of my tongue with that one. But, um, but you guys understand that, like, as we go through our lives, it's easy to look at the things around us, the world around us, the situations that we've been put in and go, well, can't do nothing about that. <laughs> and it's not worth worrying about. I'm not saying that, but what I'm saying is to give it to God. So we have the power of the Holy Spirit with us and our prayers are effective and do great things. That doesn't mean that God answers our prayers the way we want them to all the time. I think you guys know that. Um, but, <laughs> um, but that we have, um, we have power in our prayer. Um, does this chapter overall, um, what, what help does it give uh, the capital C church, like the church in general? I think it's a message of encouragement. Mm -hmm. in, yeah, it's it, having the power of the Holy Spirit in us because Jesus dwells in us. And that um, um, instead of being afraid of what might happen, we can turn this over to God and kind of free ourselves from that anxiety, worrying that what do we need to do, but instead in prayer, kind of confessing our faith in Jesus that God is in control. Yeah. God being in control is, is something that can be a comfort for Christians mm -hmm. and a huge stumbling block to those who do not believe. Um, so my recommendation is that using a phrase like that is not the world's best um, uh, outreach message uh, <laughs> at, a, at a time like this in particular, where people are um, looking in their world and going, what's happening? So much has changed. Uh, I'm scared. What do I do? Um, there's a lot of other gospel messages, but the but the one of... God is in control might, might not be the, the best thing to introduce Christ to somebody. And just going to throw that one out there during our, during this particular COVID time, it might be more worth a conversation of Jesus goes with you, no matter the road, um, no matter the valley versus, yeah, God's in control of this. He's making this happen. Um, you see how that distinction is probably important, right, for people? Um, I like Sandy's thing about encouragement, though, because we could pray verses 17 through the end of chapter 1 there for a lot of our members here at Holy Cross. Holy Cross. <laughs> Redeemer. <laughs> Redeemer. Um, just no. as an encouragement. You know, no. We're good. Yeah. I love that last part of 17. Um, uh, so that you may know him better. Just such this beautiful phrase in the middle there um, for, for relationship. And, and that is one of my big encouragements to all of us during this time. God may be forcing some Sabbath for all of us. Um, forcing some what? Sabbath. Okay, we all run at a pace, a certain pace. Maybe that pace has been lessened of late. Um, that might be okay. That might be good for us to be able to uh, reprioritize some of that time uh, to have God as more of a centerpiece in our day or a bigger chunk of our day um, instead of it being something that happens more. If I get to it, I'll get to it. Um, and I'm first one guilty of that, and maybe this is not a 
maybe you had wonderful habits about this prior to, I struggled with this at times. Um, my, my office hours have indicated that, um, you know, that it should be a priority for me. Uh, there's an even spot on my calendar, Google calendar every day, devotion time, Josh, do it right now. Um, but there were times, even if I saw it on a calendar, even if I had the materials all there ready to go, if it wasn't, if there were other things that were more pressing, then I made that more pressing thing the priority. I, I agree with you, Josh. Yeah. Huh? I agree with you totally, too. It's like, it's, you know, I was so busy, and now it's like some days the weeks, it just seems so long. And, but now, <laughs> It's like, I'm going like, I'm starting like eyes on Jesus. I didn't, I was doing another devotion and, you know, I'm just have more time. I have more time. I guess it is a Sabbath. It is. And it's amazing that, I mean, if you think about it, what do like parents have to do for overtired children? Like you're taking a nap. You don't want to take a nap. You don't, you can't even process that you need to take a nap, but you take a nap. Um, and in some ways, I think God might be doing that right now for us as a world, like you're running way too fast. Got to slow it down, people. Take time, be with family. And this is me looking at it, trying to, trying to make a nice spin on some things, because not everything is that way for families in this. Um, but I have noticed that some families have been able to have conversations they haven't been able to have. Some families have been able to be together in ways they haven't been able to be together in other ways in the past. So I'm seeing, seeing the good in some of that too. Um, and an encouragement for all of us that God does have this. Um, and uh, in his power, in his strength, we as a church will get through it. So um, I'm going to conclude that for our first chapter section for right now, but uh, um, I'm going to give a quick time here. If there's any uh, prayer requests you might have, I'll pray those this time. I'll try to give a little bit more time next time to circle prayer this um, in the wonderful RSE way that we've done in the past. Uh, and if you're unfamiliar with that, it's just an opportunity for everybody to kind of have a moment to, to pray. Um, during Zoom, it's probably best to have the admin, me, uh, tell who's praying next. But uh, we'll do that one next time because I didn't leave enough time today. So um, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to pray us out. But if there's any prayer requests, shoot them to me here. Nice. Maybe that more would join us on our Bible study. Yep. I do that. All right, friends. Let's close in a word of prayer. Uh, Lord Jesus, um, you are the head of the church, and you give to us every good gift. As we uh, are encouraged by your word and, and are strengthened by the words that you give us, uh, Lord, help us to, um, to live that Easter life with power and strength, knowing that you have this. Lord, we ask that um, others might uh, join this conversation. Uh, we ask that others would be, uh, that our family believers uh, all together, Lord, would be, um, would make your word a priority, that they would focus on you. Um, God, we give you praise in all things and ask that you would guard our ways and be with us and keep us healthy. Um, and keep us focused on our relationship with you. In your name, amen. Amen. All right, y'all. Next week, I'll shoot you a link, um, and uh, hopefully you can join us. So, Are we supposed to read, uh, read on in the Ephesians? Or? You're, you are absolutely welcome to read on. We will be uh, Ephesians 2 and 3 next week, okay? okay. Cool, cool. We will see y'all. Have a good one. Later. Yep. Bye-bye. Bye. Thanks, Chad. Yep. Thanks. <laughs>